Hi folks, Bill Steele here with 3D Chameleon and in this little video I thought I'd show you the uh, new firmware for the Mark III 3D Chameleon. Now the only difference in hardware between the Mark 2.5 and the Mark III um, is actually there is no difference in the hardware. The only difference is in the firmware that's actually running on the electronics. So I thought what I'd do is do a quick little demonstration video of sh and show you how the new uh, firmware works. In the previous versions, there were several different commands that you would enter into uh, the unit by pressing the switch here. And those commands would tell it to uh, turn the motor, uh, uh, select a color, advance a quarter, or rehome it. Um, or other commands would tell this to turn clockwise or counterclockwise for uh, however long you were pressing the button. So instead, with the Mark III, we've taken an entirely new approach, and that uh, the Mark III starts off with, um, here, let me just show you. We'll just unplug it and plug it in. And it starts off with an assumption that no filament is loaded. All of the filaments are pushed through all the way to just about before the first, um, the top of the Y adapter here. So here you can see the red is right there. And all the other colors are just about that same level. I have a dark blue in one. I have red in number two, I have white in number three, and I have a lighter blue in number four. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the button, and you will see that on first load, uh, the first thing that we need to do is home this. So I'm going to press this. Now what's new about this is that this gives you feedback about what it's doing. So as I press and hold the button, you will see that the selector will vibrate about once every half second. The commands are now numbered, so 1, 2, 3, 4 to switch to colors 1, 2, 3, and 4, no matter where you're at. 5, 6, and 7 are, are variations of homing. 5 will home it and load color 1. 6 will, home, will unload whatever the active color is and then home it. And 7 will just home it, um, which means move back to selector 1. So let's just do a 7 real quick and you'll see it home that. So I'm just going to press it and we're going to listen and you'll hear this vibrate seven times. And when I let off that seventh time, it, it executes that command. So that was a home. So now let's tell it to go ahead and load color three. Let's load the white filament. And you can see in our uh, tube there is nothing coming out of it. But we'll just jump right into that and we'll just do a color three. So it'll be one, two, three pulses. Because there was no filament loaded previously, it automatically knew to go ahead and load it. Now we have the white filament sticking out. So let's go ahead and load the red filament, which is number two. Now all we have to do is tell it to go to number two. It's going to unload the white color, switch to the number two, and load the red color. And that's it. That's all there is to using this new version. That's the minimal that you need to know. Switch to any color, just press it and hold it until this vibrates that many times. So we can load color four by letting it vibrate four times. So it'll unload the current color and load the fourth color, light blue. So the reason for doing it this way is it allows much, much faster color changes. It does assume that all of the distances are about 10 inches, so uh, which is the same that we did in the previous versions. Uh, but this just makes it a lot easier. You, can, you only need to press it one time. This makes the tool change G-code a lot shorter, and it eliminates the very long presses that we had to do, um, which in the previous version could be upwards of 30 seconds of button pressing. Now we can do it in um, about two seconds for this. Now the other interesting thing about this is the pulses, if we hold on to this and we can listen to the count, so that was a 9 pulse, there was no command associated with 9, uh, but if we listen to that, those pulses are about half a second apart. We can actually reprogram what those pulses, what that duration of the uh, pause is between those pulses. Um, so. There is a command uh, for 15 seconds that will allow you to uh, change the duration of that pulse. So a lot of times what people will do is they will set this up 
to maybe have it a little bit longer pulse. So let's go ahead and set it to be about one second. So the command is 15 pulses. The unit will respond with three pulses. Now it's asking for the first pulse. We're going to make that about one second. One one thousand. It responded with the click. It's asking for the second duration. The second duration should always be twice whatever the first duration is. So we'll make this two seconds. One one thousand. Two one thousand. Now what it's just done is it's responded with two and it's reset itself. Now all of our button presses will be one second apart. What it actually did is it took the second pulse time and subtracted the first pulse time and it knows that the engagement and disengagement motions that you're putting in here uh, will actually tell it how long it takes your mechanical system to actually press the button. The difference in the duration is actually how long the pulse should be and we'll hear that in the code here. So now when I do a let's say switch back to a color let's see what color do we have we have blue sticking out so let's switch back to number uh, two here red. Let me move this so you can see it. So there's the blue sticking out so we'll switch to two and you'll hear how slow these pulses are now. So it's changed the duration of those pulses. We'll switch to two There we go. So the other command that we have in here, um, this is fine for loading your existing extruder and unloading your existing extruder. Uh, but in a lot of scenarios, you might want to use uh, this instead of using our mo motor to drive it, you can use your stock extruder's motor to drive it. And by doing that, you can eliminate your the second extruder altogether and just use ours as the extruder. Uh, in order to get into that mode, you're going to uh, enter a command of 10. So 10 pulses and you'll hear it respond with the mode that it's in. There are two modes. There are extruder mode and there's direct mode. So we're going to be, we're currently in extruder mode. Uh, we're going to switch to direct mode by doing 10, 10 pulses. And there you heard it respond with one. Now what will happen is every time I change the color, it just changes the color. So by doing that, it, it, it's allowing us to change the color, but it's not moving the extruder. It's assuming that your G-code is going to move the extruder to load the filament in and out. So this works in uh, the classic uh, 3D Chameleon mode as well as the classic 3D Chameleon uh, extruder replacement mode. So let's go back to that extruder uh, mode. So now it's responded with two pulses indicating that it's back in the other mode. So if we uh, if we um, go back to, well we're already on this one so let's go ahead and unload this guy. Um, I'm going to I'm going to home it with seven pulses first. And I'm going to tell it to unload this current one. Actually, it's not it doesn't have that one loaded. So let's we reset it because we changed the uh, mode, so it doesn't know what that filament is loaded. So there we go. Now we'll tell it to go ahead and load number one just by one press. And then we'll, we can then switch to any of the other colors. So back to three, for example, white. So yeah, this is the newest uh, filament, or I'm sorry, newest um, firmware that's on the machine. This is the Mark III firmware that gives you uh, audible feedback of how long your pulses should be. And you can use that to tune your G-code to make sure you get to the right durations. You can also, like you saw there, reprogram the duration of the pulses uh, with the 15 second or 15 um, vibration pulses. Um, you can switch modes with 10. 
and um, 1, 2, 3, and 4 always switch to colors 1, 2, 3, and 4. 5 is home and load. 6 is unload and home. And 7 is just home. So those are all the commands that are supported in here. Uh, between those, you should be able to duplicate any of the functionality that we had in any of the previous versions of the 3D Chameleon. Hope you enjoy it. By the way, I might add, uh, if you have a Mark II or a Mark 2.5 and you would like this firmware, uh, just send me an email. We will post it out there. You're going to need an Arduino or an ICSP programmer. Um, and basically what you're going to do is, if you pop the lid off here, we have the ICS programmer here. Um, you'll just plug in your programmer here and burn the new firmware. We have a hex file available uh, that you can just burn directly to it using AVR Dude. Have fun. Thanks.